Hiya guys, I've had a lot of requests for this lately, so I finally decided to make a new video on how to mod Project Zomboid. This is part one, and the first thing I'm going to show you is how to get yourself set up and mod or install a new map into Project Zomboid. Now to start off with, the very first thing that you need to do, you need to get yourself over to the Project Zomboid forums, here they are, you need to go to the modern section, you then need to go to tutorials and resources and then if you look at these start items here you'll see modern source materials click on that and that brings you to this page here now as you can see you've got three links up the top here the top one is tiled map editor download and install that now the second one is project zombie modern tools you need to download that as well don't do nothing with that at the moment just download those two install tiled and then unzipped project zomboid modern tools once it's unzipped it will give you a folder simply called mod tools with a load of files and a few other folders inside of that you then want to take that folder and place it inside the folder where you installed tiled i'll show you what i mean here's where i have installed tiled on my computer computer c drive program files tiled very simple, it's just the directory it gives you when you start the install program. So I've installed it from there, there it is there. I've then unzipped the mod tools file from there and placed it inside the tile folder. So there you go, you can see it there now. That's all you need to do to start off with. That third file is a blank map, which you can use to create your own map completely from scratch. We're not going to use that just at the moment. So if we just minimise that page, bring her back here. Now after installing Tiled and copying in the Mod Tools folder into the Tiled folder, open up Tiled. Once inside, you'll be presented with this. Now before you get ahead of yourself, the very first thing that you want to do before you do anything else is go to Edit, Preferences. And you need to make sure Store Tile Layer Data As is set to CSV and close it. Now that that's done, minimise tiled. Now go to where you have Project Zomboid installed. For me, it is on D Drive, Project Zomboid, 1.5D, should I say. And there you are, there's the Project Zomboid folder, and that's the file that I normally use to play the game. Now you'll see these folders at the top here. The one that we're looking for is Media. Open up that folder there, and you'll be presented with these files and folders, as you can see. Now we want to select test.tmx, right click, click on copy, and go back to your tile folder, open up the mod tools folder, or just right click on the mod tools folder, and click on paste. Now if you're using Windows 7 like me, you'll need to give admin access to copy the file inside of there with it being inside the program files folder that's not a problem just click on continue there you go you now have the standard map from project zomboid in place ready for you to open view and modify so what we want to do now that that is in there is if we open up tiled click on open it's already pointing at the mod tools folder I then want to choose test.tmx, ignore those other ones that you can see there for the moment, they're just extra ones that I have, when you open this here you will just have test.tmx, open that, and there you go, presented with the original vanilla map from 1.5d. Now what you want to do now is, just hold in control and press the minus key a few times. As you can see, that zooms you out and you can see the whole map. Now at the moment it all looks a bit strange, it looks a bit funny, but get used to it because that's how tiled looks. It's not a problem whatsoever. Now a lot of people get here, quite easy to do, not too hard now that you've seen how to do it, um, but obviously the get stuck is in the not sure what to do from now. So I'm going to explain a few of the functions within tiled. Try and bear with us, we'll see what we're going to do. I'm just going to zoom in by pressing Control and plus one more level just so I get to see everything nice, nicely and clear. Now as you can see at the right hand here we have what are called layers. 
As you can see, there's a lot of layers there. Some with tick boxes. Some of them ticked, some of them not. Let us show you what these do. As you can see, you can see the floor, you can see the grass, you can see the trees, you can see the chairs, the tables. There's a lot of stuff you can see on there. Now, these things that are ticked, for example, floor. Let's untick floor, see what happens. As you can see, as some of you might have guessed, the floor has disappeared. If we tick it again, it comes back. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, no, do that again. The floor hasn't disappeared. Some of it has, some of it's gone grey, but there's still a lot of floor there. That isn't the floor. The best way to show you is by doing this. As you can see, there's another layer here called furniture, and it's also ticked. If we untick furniture, most of it disappears. So you've got floor, and you've got furniture. If I get rid of furniture, you've still got the floor. Get rid of floor, you've got neither. Put the furniture back on, you've got the furniture, but not the floor. Tick the floor, you've got them all back on. Yeah, you get the drift? Good, good. Right, so basically, just from looking at that, you can see the kind of things that you're going to need to do to add or remove certain things within the game. If we zoom in a little bit more by pressing Control and Plus, and we'll just work in this bottom corner. We're not going to do too much, we're just going to basically show you how to use it and the things to look out for. Now I'm just going to do a really, really quick and simple mod here. I'm just going to have a play around with the bank. All I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a maybe a couple of new pictures in and a couple of new bits of furniture or something like that. Now like I say, if we're just looking at the bank, Control and Plus it in, get it on screen a bit more, make it a bit easier to see. Getting rid of the floor by unticking it, you can see the floor's disappeared. Now by using that method, you can do things, you know, you can work out what layer any item is on. And if you want to add an item of that type, what layer you also need to add it on. So for instance, you can see you've got the chairs, you've got um, the desks, the pictures on the walls, stuff like that. Now I know from using it that those are on the furniture level. But if you didn't know and you wanted to check, all you'd have to do is just untick and retick these different tick boxes here until the thing you're looking at disappears. Then you know it is on that layer. I'll show you what I mean. Layer zero furniture, I know that means that that is for furniture on the ground floor. Anything on the ground floor that's furniture goes on that layer. So if I untick it, all the furniture on the ground levels disappeared. Retick it, it's all back. Now the first thing some eagle-eyed people will notice is that these pictures also disappear. What you have to remember is those pictures are on a ground tile, like you can see here, this little blue square that is behind me mouse pointer, if you can see it. That is a ground tile. Now that picture there is on that ground tile there. But it's suspended in the air to make it look like it's on the wall. So, what difference does that make, you're all asking? Well, if I want to add a new set E, say, in this part just here, we need to have a look down these tile sets in the bottom. You can have a look through them all, you'll work out what's in what eventually, but I know I need to go to tile objects. Never have a look along. There we go, there's some seating there, not the same as that seating, but it'll do for now for the purpose. Now I want to add two seats there. I know that you add the seating on the furniture layer, so you need to have that layer highlighted in blue like it is now. Even if I move up and down, look, it stays highlighted. And then click the actual bit of furniture you want to add in. Once it's clicked, you'll see you move your mouse pointer over the screen and it's there. Now you click on the square you want to put it on, as so. And then I need to make the other side for it, so I'll choose that one and put that down next to it. Great, very easily done. So that's some new furniture added into the vanilla map on Project Zomboid. But now if I want to get a bit more clever and add a couple of new pictures in. Well, I want to have a nice picture behind that settee, behind that chair. Why not? Well, let's give it a go. What will happen? I've selected the picture. As you can see, look, it's shown the blue square for the cell it's actually going to be added on. But as you can see, it's hanging in the air to make it look like it's on the wall. So if we click above... Right, on one of these chairs so that the picture will be suspended above the chair on the wall behind it we'll see what happens oh no we've done it the picture's there but the chair's disappeared why 
because we're still on the furniture layer. You can only have one item of each layer on each cell. So if I have this chair on the zero furniture layer, like so, that's going to override the picture that was on the furniture zero layer. How do we get around that? Well, the easy way is select your picture, but this time make sure furniture two is highlighted. And then if we do the same again by clicking on the same cell that the chair is on, we now have both. Because on the layer furniture, we'll have the chair, and the layer furniture two will have the picture. So even though they're both, both furniture, we've separated the two over two different layers to have both on one square. Now using that method, you could literally, obviously as you can imagine, have one of every single one of these layers on top of one cell. So what there's about 30 layers, 35 layers there, if it was possible, you could have 35 things per cell as long as each one was on a separate layer. Hence how on the floor, you've got a floor tile beneath the seat, and then on furniture, you have a chair, a seat, and then on furniture two, you have the picture above it. So already you have three things all on one cell. Now it's even a bit more complicated than that because you also have the walls. Now again, the walls, as you can see with the cursor, in fact, let us choose a wall. It will make it a bit easier for you to see, I suppose. Tile walls, any wall will do that one there. If I wanted to put a new wall in, change the, the bank's original wall to this stripy black and white wall here, as you can see, even though the wall is behind the cell, you're still selecting that cell there, but the wall is only be showing up on the back part of it, if you know what I'm saying. I'm not very good at describing that, but you know what I'm saying. So even if you do that, There you go, you've changed a bit of wall. How easy is that? Again, you can change it back. All well and good. There are a few exceptions, however. Like if you look at these walls here, why does it give you a full corner wall? Well, the point being, that corner there is just those two walls put together. Why have they done it like that? Well, let's try and put these walls down by themselves. There's a corner there in the back, look, there's a wall, this wall here, we'll put that down. Oh, what's happened? That part of the wall's disappeared. Let's put that one back in place then. Now that part of the wall's disappeared, what's going on? Well, because of the way the tiles work, as you can see there, there's the wall, but below it you've got the blue cell telling you which cell that bit of wall is ad actually added to. Now because we're in that corner, that wall is using the cell directly in front of it to the south, and that wall is also going to be placed on the same cell. So we can't have two walls on the same layers on the same cell. So if we change that to wall 2, then we could. We've got both walls in, look. Great. But to stop obfuscating it too much and to make it easier for people, you can have both of them using this one cell on one layer. So instead of having to put one corner wall on zero walls and the other side on zero walls too, you just select the actual corner, zero walls, and put it in by itself like that. Saving the need to put two different walls on two different layers. But anyways, using those methods, now you can see by you know having a bit of a play around yourself and doing things, having a bit of a mess around, you can add any of the items that are already in the game, you can use this to change them or to add in more of the same or delete some of the ones that are there. Anything you want. You know, you can even add more trees into the park if you want. You All you've got to do is go through these different tile sets down the bottom. Find what you're looking for. Like if I want to add some more rocks. That's on the tile floor, so I want to go down. I want to make sure I'm on the floor layer and then we'll zoom in so you can see what's happening click it down on each cell and there you go you see simple as that and now changing that road to make it look like make it look like a bit of a grassy cobbled path instead 
once you've done all the modding that you want and you've put all the things that you made sure everything's on the right layer like if you've added a new building you need to put the walls on the walls layer you need to put the doors on the doors layer the frames which are basically the door frames and the windows need to go on that layer etc etc obviously you put your floor down like if you want it on grassy tiles you put the grassy tiles down you can even click and hold like i'm doing now but it can get messy you know i've gone off the lines there so i'll have to find that tile and then put that one back but you know using those methods and obviously straight away look i've done it wrong i've added those onto frames rather than onto floor what difference does it make? Well, let's see. If we get rid of the frames layer, it disappears. It shouldn't be doing that. It should be disappearing when it's on the floor layer, but it doesn't. So what we need to do is we need to go back onto the frames layer, undo all of that, and then if I want to redo it, make sure our floor is selected this time. Click and hold and drag. But there you go, so, so some very simple ways of modding the vanilla map there. But using those ideas and those methods, you can see it's not too hard to work out the rest for yourself, to add new furniture in, make yourself some new buildings, change the already existing landscape, what have you, anything you want to do. When you're finished, you want to go to File, Save As. What I like to do, because of the whole Windows Administrator Rights malarkey, sometimes if you just try and overwrite the test.tmx file in this folder, it won't actually do it. So what I like to do, just to make sure, is when I'm saving out a new file that's been modded, I always save it to the desktop. Save that to the desktop there. Close tiled. There you go. There's the new map there. All you need to do is cut or copy, go to your project zomboid folder, open up the media folder, which is where you got the map from in the first place, and paste it back in. When I ask you if you want to overwrite, yes, move and replace. Obviously, making sure you've got a copy of your test TMX backed up in case you want the vanilla map put back in place. Once you've done that, come back out, start project zomboid as per usual, and you have your new modern map in place, ready to play. Now, if you can't be bothered to make your own new map and you just want to install a modern map from the forums, it's very, very easy to do, very easy indeed. We'll show you how now. Again, go back to the board index, go to modern, go to completed mods, maps, choose the map of your choice, whichever one you want to choose. I'm going to be biased here and go to my page with my double map mod. There's a lovely picture for it there for you all to see. It's an absolutely great double size map. It has the original town in there and a new part of town which is makes it all twice the size of the original vanilla map that you've just seen as messing about with and tiled. But anyways, all you need to do is download that file, unzip it. Inside you'll have the test.tmx. Once you've got that test.tmx, Go to your Project Zomboid install folder, and again, go to the Media folder, and copy and paste it in here, overwriting that test TMX. Once you've done that, start your Project Zomboid game, and you've got the new map in there, ready to play, and you've got hours and hours worth of new Project Zomboid gameplay. Anyways, I hope that's helped a lot of you guys. Next episode, I'm going to be dealing with something new. I haven't quite decided yet. Either I'm going to have a quick look at the scripting capabilities or maybe an in-depth look at how to install various different mods off the forums. Not too sure yet, but hope you've enjoyed this video anyways, and I hope it all helps you get out there and make your own maps. It's probably also worth bearing in mind before I go that this mapping version is only for the paid for version of Project Zomboid, what you've seen us do. It only works with 0.1.5D. But my previous video from a couple of months ago, that deals with on how to mod the map for the tech demo, which a lot of you are still playing. Um, so if you have got a tech demo, look at that video instead. If you have got the newest, latest, paid-for version, this is the video for you. Anyways, thanks a lot, guys. See you